Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Chance Wong, and I'm the VP of Engineering here at Magnet Systems. Um, you know, I've been working in mobile apps and mobile technology for over the last 10 years, and boy, has it been an exciting ride. Um, so the first thing I want to do is do a quick show of hands. So how many people work at a company that has a mobile app? That's great. All right. And um, how many of those here know if there's a committed product roadmap for your mobile app in 2016? OK, good. Maybe, maybe that's about a half. All right, well, today I'm going to talk to you about how financial institutions can really tap into the true value of mobile applications by leveraging magnet message to enable contextual, personal, two-way conversations with their customers to drive customer engagement, loyalty, satisfaction, and ultimately increased revenues. But first, you know, the first thing I'm going to say is that mobile has become that first screen for everything. You know, from the way we get around to how we shop and buy, to even to how we communicate and even to how we get our food, right? We so often look to that device that's in our pocket, you know, if not the only place that we get things done. And in financial services in particular, the, uh, the impact of this mobile-first behavior um, of customers has really been profound. Uh, in 2015, mobile interactions actually now outpaced web interactions itself and mobile usage is only growing. You know, we talk about millennials a lot, and in 2015, millennials became the largest single generation of people in the, in the workforce today. You know, this is a generation that has grown up online, texting, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat. You know, it's, a, it's no wonder that 75% of millennials rely on mobile banking. And within the next four years, mobile banking adoption is going to swell to 81%. And the great thing about mobile uh, banking users is they're actually happy customers. Because a mobile experience is two and a half times more likely to delight a customer than a, uh, visiting a branch. And finally, one of the top three reasons why people switched banks last year, a whopping 26%, was for a better mobile experience. And I don't need to underline this because you guys all know the cost of acquiring a new banking customer runs well north of $100. And it goes without saying that building that loyalty and maintaining that loyalty uh, is critical to the success of any financial institution. You know, if I had to pick one headline about mobile in 2015, uh, it would be that messaging rules are mobile experience. These chat apps are king in terms of mobile engagement and loyalty, and nothing else even comes close. In fact, six of the top 10 mobile apps in the world are chat applications. That's WhatsApp, that's Facebook Messenger, that's WeChat, Line, Kako, uh, Viber. Together, they represent over 3 billion monthly active users. In fact, in 2015, the fastest growing mobile app was Facebook Messenger, uh, racking up nearly 800 million monthly active users. It's on track to eclipse Facebook itself. Now, the second thing is that Users are addicted to messaging. On average, users spend up to 30 minutes inside of these chat applications. In fact, half of the people look at their chat applications in uh, at least 10 times a day. So given this overwhelming evidence, um, it's really paramount um, that in-app messaging be integrated into your mobile roadmap. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so the one last point, right? It's not just about chat apps, right? Apps that have in-app messaging directly integrated into their mobile experience actually have a 117% increase in their user retention. So given this overwhelming evidence, right, it's paramount that in-app messaging really be part, part of your mobile roadmap. Doing so will unlock that untapped potential of mobile. Uh, delivering innovative experiences that have really shown to drive four key metrics. That is engagement, to leverage that context to reach your customers and initiate a conversation that's really focused on assisting them in, in accomplishing their tasks. Loyalty, to build that loyalty by having that genuine two-way conversation that demonstrates that you're willing to listen. To have that satisfaction and customer satisfaction by proactively collecting that feedback and to quickly understand and address any customer challenges and learn from those missteps. And finally, it's about revenue, because loyal, satisfied customers spend more money. 
and through deeper understanding of their needs, cross-selling opportunities abound. And so now I'm going to walk through uh, a demo which will show you how each of these can be put into action using magnet message. So to set up this scenario, uh, there's a bank we call Ubank, and they have a mobile app that has an integrated in-app messaging using magnet message. You know, Mr. Smith is a Ubank banker, and he's in the process of buying a new home. Uh, he needs escrow very soon, and it was halfway through the process of doing a wire transfer for escrow, but got distracted and didn't complete it. So now at Ubank, they were able to flag Mr. Smith as someone who abandoned his wire transfer midway. Um, and so it targets him with a personalized context-aware notification to see if they can help Mr. Smith complete this transaction. So Mr. Smith receives the notification on his phone um, with the offer to help complete his wire transfer. He accepts, and it launches into a conversation with Sandra, a, pro a Ubank private banker. Now, Sandra is able to retrieve the context of the notification and to begin the conversation with Mr. Smith about his wire transfer. Mr. Smith explains um, that he needs to complete this wire transfer to close escrow on a home that he was looking to purchase. Now, I'm going to pause here and note that, really, this is an example of real engagement. Right? Here's a situation where we identified a customer in need, and initiating a conversation about this need uh, is how this conversation started. You know, it's not simply about putting Mr. Smith back in the same place where they got stuck in the first place. It's really about making it easier for him to actually complete that transaction and complete his goal. Now, Sandra learns from this conversation that Mr. Smith has had some issues with the ABA number for the beneficiary bank. And here's where it really gets interesting. Sandra is able to present a secure form with the information of the beneficiary bank. Let's call it G-Bank. It includes bank information along with the RTN number uh, already filled in. Mr. Smith confirms that information, verifies the amount, and he receives a confirmation that the wire transfer was actually completed. And of course, he can continue to get that email confirmation that he would have gotten had he just done this himself. You know, consider what actually happened here. Within this conversational interface, Mr. Smith was able to complete a secure transaction in a form pre-populated by Sandra based on the information that she gleaned from this conversation. It really makes that wire transfer a much simpler experience and enables Mr. Smith to simply complete the amount and submit. Right? Behind the scenes, Magnet Message is integrated with the existing Ubank's you know, wire transfer system and uh, API to actually go and complete this transaction. So now that the wire transfer is complete, uh, Sandra suggests that Mr. Smith might actually be interested in a home equity line of credit. And of course, Mr. Smith acknowledges that remodeling might actually be in the works, and so financing options would actually be interesting to him. Sandra is then able to pull in Ken, who is a mortgage specialist that can actually take Mr. Smith through the home equity line of credit opportunity. You'll notice that Sandra actually continues inside this conversation to make sure that she can maintain the overall context of the conversation. So again, in this situation, Sandra is able to identify a cross-selling opportunity, right, based on the conversation with Mr. Smith that he was buying a home. By pulling in Ken, a mortgage specialist, we now have a three-way conversation about a relevant product while still ensuring that there's a smooth transition in a conversation. Now, Mr. Smith now presents the fact that he's already actually gotten a competing quote from, an, from a competitive bank. And Ken requests that Mr. Smith actually send that quote over uh, and actually submit it as a photo. And so upon examination, Ken is actually able to offer Mr. Smith a better offer than his competition. And of course, uh, Mr. Smith is more than happy to accept these terms, and Ken promises that uh, he'll contact him as soon as the paperwork is actually done. So in this case, right, we see how this conversation has taken a previously unknown competitive situation and turns it into an opportunity to build actually greater loyalty. Mr. Now, Mr. Smith now associates Ubank as a bank that's willing to go the extra mile to make him happy. The alternative, obviously, could have been quite disastrous for Ubank's relationship with Mr. Smith. And so complete, upon completing this interaction, uh, there is an in-app notification that asks Mr. Smith for feedback on his most recent session. 
Now, he's delighted with this experience, and so he's happy to share this experience with uh, Eubank. He rates his, his experience great and, and is willing to provide a comment about uh, what his experience was like, you know, indicating that Ken's willingness to beat a competitive offer um, was amazing and is worth sharing with his friends. So, of course, getting good and honest feedback from customers is a huge challenge in any app. And so capturing that feedback in the moment is key. Positive feedback can be gathered for training purposes and, of course, to reward great customer service. But even more interestingly, negative feedback can trigger customer service to proactively address dissatisfactions in the heat of the moment before it actually becomes a real and very public problem on the Twitter sphere. And while we focused on that mobile experience here, it actually wouldn't be complete without showing you how Sandra, the private banker, would see this conversation in her own desk. Built on a complete web interface, Sandra, uh, Sandra would be able to manage forums and potentially participate actually even in multiple conversations simultaneously while maintaining the context and history of all of them. So you've seen this demo and how compelling mobile experiences have evolved. The one directional SMS and push notifications of the past, driven by marketing to sell more products, really does nothing, than more, nothing more than annoy the users. Is it any surprise that over 80% of mobile users today disable push notifications at some point? Where mobile apps need to be in 2016 is really working to enable self-service and collaboration paradigm enabled by in-app messaging, providing that bi-directional conversations and interactions. 79% of users said they would engage with the brand in the chat session, and it's what users want anyways. So this shift in thinking about messaging is really about bringing that real engagement, loyalty, satisfaction, and revenue through that personal customer connection. You know, the, the trends that show messaging has already become a key driver of a mobile platform um, is obvious, and the chat apps themselves are jumping all over this. Just look at what WeChat has done in China where WeChat wallet has become dominant. Users can pay their credit cards, pay their utility bills, pay with a, a camera in the store. They can buy movie and plane tickets. They can hail a taxi, they can send money. You get the picture. But how successful has this been, right? Well, 60% of, of the 650 million people on WeChat today have registered their debit or credit cards on WeChat. The lucky money tradition of handing out red envelopes during Chinese New Year, well, uh, that's gone mobile in WeChat and 420 million people uh, sent transactions of a total of 8 billion transactions in one day. By the way, that's double what uh, PayPal did all of last year. So if you think that chat vendors aren't squarely looking at shaking up financial services, think again. Wealth is a feature that enables people to move money in seconds in a money market account that earns 3.5% interest. They have a new product called Whaley Dai which is literally translated into a tiny bit of loan. It approves people for a loan in under one minute and can borrow up to 200,000 RMB, which translates to about $30,000. Um, in the first six months, they already loaned up uh, something worth 125 million US. So while China does exhibit some different behavior from the rest of the world, it's, it's not to say that this isn't coming across these borders. Facebook Messenger already has been showing signs of actually getting into this action. Uh, allowing you to send, message, send uh, cash between users. And Google has rumored to be working on a new chat application to work in the same space. But the reason why we built Magnet Message, oops, is we provide a secure, enterprise-grade, real-time messaging and engagement platform for mobile and web. We have native SDKs for iOS and Android and JavaScript. It enables you to build that simple way to realize those real-time communications. We specifically built this with enterprise in mind from the ground up, enabling you to have real-time contextual interactions, secure audible messages, flexible deployment options, and support for integration to your existing systems and SaaS. So in closing, I just want to leave you with this. If I asked you at the beginning if you have a mobile strategy, well, I'll, I'll say this. If you do not have a messaging strategy, and that messaging strategy is not part of your mobile uh, strategy, it's time to think again. 
you will be left behind unless you think about that. Define your messaging strategy before it defines you. Thank you.